Okay, so exploring, do you just do you just call it like SIBO or SIBO, just the acronym? S I B O. S I B O. Um, as a Parkinson's, so exploring it as a Parkinson's treatment, like, can you treat? Right. So that's the so the small intestinal bacteria. So we all have our gut is full of bacteria. And mm -hmm. it's, it's like actually is like a, a the genome in there of all sorts of different bacteria, parasites, things like that. And parasites. there is still like this running theory <coughs> that you know, does Parkinson's originate from the gut, mm -hmm. right? That's where we get a lot of constipation, we get lots of GI issues, things like that. So there's, there's all of that still being researched and kind of getting out there. Um, SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, there have been studies that show that Parkinson patients uh, compared to the population overall, um, a higher percentage of Parkinson patients have this overgrowth. Welcome to The Secret Life of Parkinson's, a podcast created by people living with Parkinson's to help break the stigma of a disease no one likes to talk about. Now here are your hosts, Jessica Krauser and Brian Baker. And what role does that play in the disease? Um, and so just because everything with Parkinson's, everything is mixed yeah. that comes out there, right? So everything you, there is one that's positive, they'll be countered with a negative study. So mm -hmm. kind of what's show that potentially patients, PD patients that do have someone SIBO, um, could they have, is their progression potentially faster? Or they have more severe symptoms? Are the medication less effective because the levodopa is not getting absorbed? Theoretically, yeah. There's even, but then, like you know, even test that there are two different tests that you could do for SIBO um, that are looking at. They're like breathalyzer testing to see if you have it, and so even those fluctuate. So what so, would make you even test for that? Like it, people who have people get tested for for GI issues. So when they have like severe, if they're having you know really bad, you know whether it's irritable bowel syndrome, or whatever, mm -hmm. it gets more diagnosed from a GI doctor. They're having oh. gut issues, cramping, something else is going okay. on. And so they're the ones, and then it's like, okay, so then it started being looked at in terms of, well, does Parkinson's have a role in this? So then PD kind of got looped into it. Um, mm -hmm. There was a, and then it was looked at, so what we know is, yes, there's a potential that Parkinson's disease patients, a higher percentage of PD patients could have this overgrowth compared to patients that don't have PD. Mm -hmm. What does that, how significant is that is still unknown. And what role does that play in terms of disease progression is hard to say. There are studies, um, University of Cincinnati actually just mm -hmm. published a paper last month. Um, they tried to do a study with a medication called Rituxan, which can eliminate the overgrowth. Hmm. and to see if that could potentially help PD patients yeah. with motor symptoms or decrease their off episodes. Mm -hmm. um, it ended up being a futile study because they couldn't get, they got four patients eventually enrolled. Six and the two had to drop out. And then again, these inconsistency with testing, some the patients then zero converted to having it and then not having it. And so there's still so much of it's not uh, so set in stone to make, that part of this that part of pd research go forward mm -hmm. um so they ended up <clears throat> kind of stopping the study because it it there was just no these four patients they, they got every mixed results throughout they the couldn't board. get more patients they than couldn't that? get more people Why? than that and i think they started recruiting back in 20 i think the recruitment was 27 16 17 and then it just got published last march of 2024 the paper um and it was four patients this is my other issue with with, with pharma is so, like is like are you are are you reaching out to certain advocacy groups are you right. find, you know like we're out there right and so and but but then even then it was like they may have been able to recruit people but yeah. like their the eligible eligibility mm -hmm. criteria was a little bit off they needed a higher really significant off periods that they weren't reaching mm. people for so there there may have been they just the criteria was off. So the, yeah. the trial itself, whether it was how it was designed, may have been part of the issue. I don't know. So the, but, but, but the thing is, you don't have to get tested for that unless you're experiencing the GI exactly. issues. Yes, okay. yes, yeah. It's that's for people who have, which again, a lot of Parkinson's patients do have. So it's, it's valid. But then we don't know what we do with that result. 
See my mm -hmm. point? So, so mm -hmm. say you do. Say you have this small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Okay, well, now what? Well, I mean, if when it, let's just say any person who has it that doesn't have PD, wouldn't you treat it? Do they get it treated? But there's no, there, yeah, that's the thing. There is no, so this study, the PD study was looking at like rituxan, which is a immunosuppressant. It's a, it's okay. not a, a mild medication. Okay. You, you know what I mean? So it's, it's sort of a, so it just depends on, I, I, I can't say I would leave it up to a GI specialist, whether they think that from a gut perspective, mm -hmm. not a PD perspective, mm -hmm. from a gut perspective, if the patient's GI symptoms are related to that and treating that would improve their GI symptoms, mm -hmm. then sure. But there hasn't been a, a direct correlation with doing that to improve your Parkinson's symptoms. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Gut health. Gut health. Brian loves gut health. <laughs> It was yeah. a scramble yeah, I know. I heard. I heard a <laughs> we actually did have um, an episode recently with Martha Carlin, and she is um, she's a science, scientific researcher. Or, um, she she actually changed her career because oh. her husband has Parkinson's, mm. and he's had it for twenty years. And she's just she's really smart. Oh. Um, but she uh, created or, or developed um, probiotics. With you know, with other doctors and things mm -hmm. like that, who are all big into the gut yeah. microbiome. Mm -hmm. um, so, are your like? And I actually don't think I was ever told, but I know it's like a normal thing for people just to be on probiotics. Do you mm -hmm. recommend mm -hmm. probiotics? I do. I think mainly for again, it's it is healthy gut. Gut health is mm -hmm. is important, right? We know that. Wow. 90% of Parkinson's patients have constipation. Mm -hmm. Everything slows down, including your gut. At mm -hmm. the same end, we know that levodopa has to get to the intestine uh, to get absorbed to the blood mm -hmm. for it to get to the brain. So you need proper, you need normal flow. So however that works, whether that for some people it's a probiotic, makes things much easier, great, do that. Some people need to take a prune every day, great, <clears throat> do that. So oh. I just thought of this, sorry, I'm like totally. Purple squirrel. Purple squirrel. You distracted. Oh, no, I'm not <laughs> distracted. I just, I feel bad because I'm like talking the whole time. Um, but is it possible, like, I don't think, not not for my case, because I don't, I don't think it would be me, but I'm thinking of somebody else at the gym who just started taking um, probiotics. Um, and, you know, she said it has helped her digest it, digestion, mm -hmm. digestion, whatever, system. Um, she's been on it for probably like a month or two now. Could, if it's helping her gut from like allowing the levodopa to get absorbed, could that be throwing off her symptoms? Like if all of a sudden she notices like her symptoms are like, like she, I, she actually questions, she's like, am I over medicated now? Just, oh, just more, more levodopas. Yeah. Is that absorbed. possible? Like, um, sure. I mean, Yes. The, okay. You know, and, and that's the same concept behind protein, right? There are people who oh, yeah, yeah. are sensitive to protein in the opposite way is when you take it, if you take your levodopa with protein, that specific dose doesn't work as well. It's not because okay. it's being bound up by protein. There are people that are not sensitive to that. Yeah. It doesn't make a difference. Um, huh. But uh, there's definitely that, you know, now if we clear that up, the same concept behind uh, Duopa, which is the intestinal gel, the yeah. levodopa intestinal gel, uh, you know, that is going directly into the intestine, right? We're bypassing mm -hmm. the stomach. We're going straight there, straight into the intestine, straight into the blood. Um, theoretically, those patients would potentially need or do better with, they don't need as much of a levodopa concentration mm -hmm. as they did with their pills. Okay. Um, because they're getting directly to the source. Yeah. That's interesting. So it's like, you know, people need to know if you change anything with your diet or like anything else, yeah. like, and you notice, uh, not even, not, not symptoms necessarily, but side effects right. of medicine. It could be because the absorption, be the absorption is changing. Has changed. Yeah. True statement. <laughs> Are you awake? Yeah. Just um, taking it all yeah no this was good i like I yeah know. yeah so, so small intestinal small intestinal bacterial, bowel, bacterial overgrowth small intestinal bacterial overgrowth okay yeah.
All right. Well, thanks again All for right. coming on. No problem. Thank you, guys. This was a great session to talk about gut gut health again. Yes. Learning all the time. So I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you, guys. Um, in our last 30 seconds, I'll leave you with this. Um, if you do have GI issues, uh, it's obviously you need to talk to a GI doctor. Um, but always make sure that you're consulting back with your neurologist or movement disorder specialist so that they can figure out if anything is connected or if there's anything that needs to be changed. But again, it's just always being open with your physician so that they know what's going on with your entire body so that you can live your best life today. Have a great day.